Welcome to our daily devotion. The Methodist Church of Barbados invites you to sing, pray, and worship with us as we declare God's glory and celebrate His mighty acts. Let us pray. Almighty God, we come before your throne, acknowledging you alone to be our God, our Lord, our Savior, our brother, and our friend. There is no God beside you, Lord, none to be compared with you. Only you have created the heavens and the earth and all that is in it. Truly, you are great and you are greatly to be praised. And so we bless your name. We praise your name. We magnify your name that is above every other name. You are Jesus. You are our Lord. And there is no other God beside you. So, Heavenly Father, as we come to your throne of mercy, your throne where forgiveness is received to all who call upon your name and make our sins known to you, we declare that we have wronged you in so many different ways. We confess that we are sorry for all that we have done thought about doing that does not please you. Forgive us, we pray, and help us by the power of your Holy Spirit to walk in the righteous path that you have ordained for us to walk in. We give you thanks today for your goodness. We thank you, Almighty God, for all the blessings that you continue to pour out upon us. We thank you for the healing that we have received from you, for the provisions that you have given to us, for meeting our needs, Almighty God, and for the many blessings 
that you showered down upon us. We say thank you, Lord God. We thank you for your faithfulness towards us and for your mercies that never come to an end. We thank you, Lord God, for how you are resetting us in so many different ways in our lives and for doing and fulfilling your purposes and plans for us. Father God, as you prepare us for that season of revival and as you renew us, help us to be obedient and to walk in that path that you are preparing for us to walk in. We thank you, Lord God, for your spirit's presence in and through us. And so, Father God, as we spend this time in worship in your presence, we pray, Lord God, that you would cause our ears to be open and our hearts to become malleable so that we not only hear what you are speaking to us as we pray, as we listen to your word, as we sing songs of praise to you, almighty God. But may we become doers of your word, so fulfilling the purposes and the plans for which you have created and brought us here to fulfill. So we bless you, we praise you, we magnify your holy name. In Jesus' name, we pray with thanksgiving. Amen and amen. In a world where we're losing hope And life has us on the ropes Misunderstandings, hate running rampant Every man out for his own It seems like we've lost our way And the distance grows every day Thought that we had it, caught in the madness Oh, ain't it tragic, but you said If we turn from our wicked ways And humble ourselves and pray You'd seek your face, you'd give us grace So come have your way, Lord Here we are, abandoned hearts On bended knees with outstretched arms God, hear us from heaven Send us your prayers we need you, Lord. We need you, Lord. Summer and spring may pass, but winter and fall won't last. I can trust the Creator, He's perfect in nature, better is coming, I know. And just like the rising sun, our faith is rising up. You're the God of your promise and what you have started. You're faithful to finish because you said, if we turn from our wicked ways, we humbled ourselves in prayer. And seek your face, you'd give us grace So come have your way, God Here we are, abandoned hearts Abandoned knees with outstretched arms God, hear us from heaven Send us your prayers We need you, Lord We need you, Lord
The scripture reading is taken from Psalm 32. Happy are those whose transgression is forgiven, whose sin is covered. Happy are those to whom the Lord imputes no iniquity, and in whose spirit there is no deceit. When I kept silence, my body wasted away through my groaning all day long. For day and night your hand was heavy upon me. My strength was dried up as by the heat of summer. Then I acknowledged my sin to you, and I did not hide my iniquity. I said, I will confess my transgressions to the Lord, and you have forgave the guilt of my sin. Therefore let all who are faithful offer prayer to you at a time of distress. The rush of the mighty waters shall not reach them. You are a hiding place for me. You preserve me from trouble. You surround me with glad cries of deliverance. I will instruct you and teach you the way you should go. I will counsel you with my eye upon you. Do not be like a horse or a mule without understanding, whose temper must be curbed with a bit and bridle, else it will not stay near you. Many are the torments of the wicked, but steadfast love surrounds those who trust in the Lord. Be glad in the Lord and rejoice, O righteous, and shout for joy, all you upright in heart. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God.
A pleasant good evening, brothers and sisters in Christ. Louis B. Smead says, To forgive is to set a prisoner free and discover that prisoner is you. A couple of years ago, our family was involved in a family feud, not the game with Steve Harvey, the reality version. The situation resulted in some issues where parts of the family became fragmented and little or no interaction took place with one member of the family. There was tension and turmoil in silence. As I tried to rationalize, spiritualize the situation in my head, the spirit of Almighty God within me and my heart had a spiritual war or tug of war. Much wrestling took place as I sought to resolve the issue without confronting it face to face. But as I read God's word and prayed, I kept being convicted that there is some unforgiveness here that needs to be dealt with. I prayed rationalized, gave God 101 reasons why I was not in the wrong and it wasn't a situation that needed to be addressed and I went on and on. In my weak state, God assured me that I cannot go wrong by seeking forgiveness even if it was a case of misunderstanding that needed to be addressed. And so I called the relative, I spoke about the situation and apologized for how I operated in the situation and asked for forgiveness. The apology was accepted and I felt if I had gone on a scale after, I might have been 10 pounds lighter from the experience physically. But also I literally felt the burden lifted. Unforgiveness is a very heavy load to carry. Too heavy for humans, in fact. We are not built with the capacity to carry unforgiveness. Jesus relieved us of that burden on Calvary. And as the song says, burdens are lifted at Calvary. Jesus is very near. Psalm 32 is one of seven psalms known in the 6th century as the penitential psalms. The other such psalms are Psalm 6, 38, 51, 102, 130, and 143. What separates and distinguishes Psalm 32 from the others though is the fact that in all the others, others, the psalmist is making confession for his sins and asking for forgiveness and awaiting forgiveness. In this psalm, Psalm 32, he is testifying and rejoicing, celebrating he's happy that he has received forgiveness. And so he's expressing with some compassion his state before and after receiving this forgiveness. And also, through his witness, he encourages others to this glorious experience. He compares it with the burden of the sick, sick state that sin causes us to experience and testifies of the deliverance that he has experienced from trusting in God to forgive and the forgiveness that he's currently experiencing. When God forgives us, it is not to make us out, as the young people would say, in a negative way. But it is for us to know that he is concerned about our welfare, 
He seeks to protect us. He seeks for us to live in that state of joy and blessedness. And so the psalmist declares that you are my hiding place. You always fill my heart with songs of deliverance whenever we are afraid or ashamed. Today, I join with the psalmist in celebrating the victory of trusting God at his word. Jesus teaches his disciples as he taught them to pray to forgive us our sins as we forgive those who trespass against us. And so note the statement doesn't read as others forgive us as they trespass against us. No, it says as we forgive those who trespass against us. Remember the quote I began with said, to forgive is to set you free is to set me, not the other person. Forgiveness, therefore, is more about us. It is an individual experience that we have that extends boundaries. When we ask someone for forgiveness, we must remember something important. Here are some things we ought to remember. Forgiveness is based on my or our perception of a situation and how it has affected us from our point of view. So I am dealing with that. Let's look, for example, at the situation with the prodigal son. He was the one who would have asked for in his inheritance and would have gone on and lived a certain kind of life. So it was his responsibility to go to this father and to ask for forgiveness. He doesn't have to worry about what other persons felt about what he did. He had the responsibility to address that situation that concerned him. The same with the psalmist David. He sinned against God and so he went to God to deal with his situation. Jesus in teaching his disciples to pray dealt with forgiveness on two levels though. Forgiveness from man and then forgiveness from God. Many of us will attest to the fact that if that it is easy to ask God forgiveness, and many of us do that very well, because in a sense we cannot see God, and we are very comfortable with asking forgiveness from someone who we cannot see. But God asks us to seek forgiveness first from those who we live in community with, those who we see daily before we come to him for forgiveness. For many persons, this is so hard to do. I am discovering that many of us are sick because of the heavy load unforgiveness we are carrying against each other. Yet we find no difficulty in praying and expecting God to hear and answer our prayers. Quite recently, I was pleasantly surprised with a conversation I was having with a parishioner who hasn't taken communion for years and expressing to me the situation that has led them to not taking communion. 
they were not willing to resolve an issue with a sister so they can participate in the Lord's Supper. Instead, they rather just not partake of the Lord's Supper and leave the situation as it is. How many of us are slowly committing spiritual suicide when God has given us the antidote for living an abundant life that he is offering us today? How many of us rather live behind the prison bars of the guilt of unforgiveness instead of walking in the freedom and liberty that Jesus Christ went to the cross to free us from. One of my students in children's Bible time commented, I do not want Jesus Christ to die on the cross again. Are we saying, brothers and sisters, that we want Jesus Christ to die on the cross a second time? No, I hope not. Yet we choose not to acknowledge the work, the complete work that Jesus Christ has already accomplished for us. May I remind you and myself that no other sacrifice for sin would be made. What God what Jesus has done on the cross is sufficient to release all our burdens and all our sins, even on forgiveness. Brothers and sisters in Christ, Jesus paid it all. All to him we owe sin has left a crimson stain, but Jesus has the power to wash it and make us white as snow. As we seek to experience forgiveness from Jesus Christ today, let me share a couple of things with you. One, when we ask someone to forgive us, we are only in control of ourselves, our words and our actions. We are not in control of the person's response towards us, though we want it to be positive. If it is not then we ought not to feel guilty, neither are we to feel that we are not forgiven. We are not to worry about it. The issue I spoke about earlier with my relative did not yield for me the response I was expecting, but I know I felt relieved because I did what I felt and believed in my heart was my responsibility. The situation with the prodigal son was different. The response he received, though he thought it was going to be negative, instead was a very positive one. We ought to know that when we seek forgiveness, we are seeking from someone, what we are seeking essentially is forgiveness from Almighty God. Two, it is often said that you could forgive, but you cannot forget. Forgetting speaks to not keeping it, though in our memory. The reason why we seek to forget and in order for us to forget is about not bringing up 
constantly the situation in a negative way or in a negative light, but allowing that situation to die. Instead, what we should do if we have to ever commit or, or remember the situation, what we ought to remember is the fact that the issue has been resolved from our end and instead we are using it as a testimony, as a victory, a joyous time and a place that we are now in as David would have shared so that others will know that God is faithful to his promises to forgive us. As far as the east is from the west, his word says, so far has he removed our transgressions from us. And so it is in this light that we share or testify of what God has done for us. And three, seeking forgiveness does not necessarily mean that a relationship would or should be restored to its original state when we are dealing with individuals. This is not when we are dealing with God. Sometimes after forgiveness is sought from an individual, we might need to move past that relationship in our lives, it may not be mended as we expect it to. In some situations, we may also need professional help to work through certain situations. But when we are dealing with God, it is different. And so our relationship with him could be restored and even we can experience growth better than before. Brothers and sisters, many of us are denying ourselves or are yet to experience the joy of forgiveness. Instead, we have chosen to endure the burden, the pain and the frustration and the sickness of unforgiveness, which will eventually lead to spiritual death and in some instances, even to physical sickness and death. Let me invite us to participate in experiencing forgiveness from Almighty God. Forgiveness that we should not mind sin and live in that state of unforgiveness, but we should always seek forgiveness since it is what opens up the airwaves to heaven. It is in this state that, uh, that, we, that allows God to hear and to answer our prayers. For 1 John 1, 9 says, if we confess our sins, he is faithful and just to forgive us our sins and to cleanse us from all unrighteousness. We too are ambassadors of Christ and therefore we should seek to represent the spirit of forgiveness wherever we are situated, in our homes, among our families, in our communities, in our cities, in our churches, in our world, we have the power to both receive forgiveness from others as well as from God and to spread that spirit of forgiveness, welcoming others to participate in it. We too have the ability to help others to access the joy, the happiness and the deliverance that Christ has to offer to all of us. 
So brothers and sisters, today let us open up our channels of our hearts to be ambassadors of Christ in flying the spiritual flag of forgiveness high. In the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. Amen.
and him in. Let us pray. Heavenly Father, we come to your throne of grace. We come to the place where forgiveness is received, where unforgiveness, we can lay our unforgiveness at your feet. For those of us who are burdened and weighed down by sin and unforgiveness within our hearts today, we pray in the name of Jesus that you will come to Jesus and cast all your worries, all your fears, all your trepidations to him, for he careth for us. We thank you, Jesus Christ, that you have the power to set the prisoner free. And so in the mighty name of Jesus, we ask you to break the yoke of unforgiveness in the hearts and lives of all of us as we seek deliverance in the mighty name of Jesus. Amen and amen. Thank you for being a part of our daily devotion. We trust it has been a blessing to you. Now together, 
Let us hold fast to his word and may it dwell in all of us richly.